Hi, I just want to give you a precursor to the video today. Um, I use several different cameras and I think I'm trying going to find the best views on each. However, I you might find that I'm looking at one camera versus the other, but I used a different clip. So I hope that it goes okay for you today. Uh, I am planning on using my husband's SLR probably for future recordings, but that was not the main camera that I used today. So actually it probably will be the main camera that I used today, but that might not be the camera that I was looking at. So I hope the video is okay by your standards today and hopefully next week will be better. Thanks for your understanding. Hi and welcome to Knitting Blooms. Today is Sunday, October 23rd, and this is episode 26. Again, take two. Uh, yesterday I had the same problem with my camera. You're going to probably see me looking at three different cameras. i got three cameras going here today and a production crew. <laughs> Cody and Crystal are here, and my husband's behind the camera because I was so frustrated yesterday when I had the same problem again with my camera. I don't know if it's the flip or if it's iMovie. I was on phone the phone last night with Apple. They think it's iMovie. Um, we tried to do a couple things and it didn't didn't work out. Um, so I'm recording again. I still have the clip from yesterday. I'm hoping that I can splice all these together and find a way to <laughs> get a show for you. So, uh, yeah, it was a little crazy yesterday, so uh, we're going to try this. I'm recording on my MacBook Pro, I'm recording on the Flip, which is what I usually do, and I'm also recording on my husband's um, digital SLR. So we're going to see how this goes. I might try and do segments just to make sure that um, I can pull in the videos, and maybe one video will be on one and one will be on be on the other. I don't know how it's going to work. And being able to see myself on the MacBook Pro is going to be difficult because I can see now how Erin checks herself out <laughs> in the, in the uh, computer because it's weird to see myself. Anyway, oh and now my husband just flipped the camera <laughs> over so I can see myself in that camera too. <laughs> oh, it's going to be uh, crazy today. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to try and get through everything that I did yesterday and um, hopefully one of these cameras or pieces of all three will work. <laughs> so I'm going to start with the podcaster challenge. I received my goodie bag and I, it was very exciting to receive. I think I got it on Monday and First of all, the bag itself was worth doing the podcaster challenge because uh, this is an awesome bag that I can definitely use as a project bag. The bags were done by Whimsy Bags uh, and their website is whimsybags.com. And let me tell you what I got in this bag. I'll start by telling you about the... Um, the book plates that Lois printed out. These are great to put in my knitting books. And I don't know. I'm gonna... <laughs> now I, I have my computer here and I can see what I'm seeing on the screen. And it, I can see a glare. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see these on one camera or the other. Oh, and my husband now, he went upstairs and he didn't flip that back so I can see myself on that camera. Okay, well, maybe I'll flip it when I do my next segment. So let's see what we got. First we've got, um, and I've already gone through this a couple of times. I went through it when I bought the bag, and I went through it yesterday with all of you when I recorded the first time. The um, What I received in the bag, this first part is a mini spindle donated by Spinnerosity. And it's a bottom whorl spindle. Um, or a supportive spindle. I think it could be both. And I have tried, I have two supported spindles, and I have tried using them, and I just can't seem to get, to get it. Um, I have per, got some cotton, and I've tried different fibers, and I'm just not, I guess because I don't do it enough that 
I, it's, I just have a hard time figuring it out. So I don't know. And I have two of them. And one of them, I, th I have two of them. And one of them has the, a little hook kind of thing at the top and the other one doesn't. So we'll see if I get into the supported spindles or the, drop, the um, low whirl. I got the supported spindles because it was to, to be able to do more lace or lighter, lighter weight um, fiber, you know, um, singles. This, this is, it's kind of a little crazy with the camera, so I'm a little discombobulated. And I've been able to get the weight of the single that I want on my, um, my drop, my other drop spindles that are about, I think my lowest one is about 15 grams. So they go from 15 to I think 23 grams and they're all under an ounce. So I've had pretty good luck with that, but I'm going to try this one out and see how I like it. But this little kit might become a, a little prize in one of my drawings because if I'm not going to use it, I would love for somebody else to get um, some use out of it. So that's the first, um, the first one. Oh, and the, the sample fiber was from um, Bartlett Yarns that's in here. And my production crew is back, but he didn't flip the camera when he went upstairs so I could see in the camera. <laughs> You can keep it that way while you're down here. <laughs> the next thing is um, a sample from Miss Babs. And this is the Yummy Toes Monochrome Sport and Sock 3-ply. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I am thinking I'm going to um, maybe use it for color work. Or I might just use it for the sock yarn squares. I'm not really sure just yet, but it definitely will get used because this is, I've used Miss Babs for a knitting for hire, but I've never used it for myself. And I did get some uh, Miss Babs from Stitches Midwest when I was there. The next thing is some stitch markers from Lois. Knitting's my bag. And they are, let me see, I can see myself in these two cameras. <laughs> so we'll see if we could show them. I'm going to take one out to see, just so you can see if you can see it. There you go. It's a square stitch marker. And I'll show it to all three cameras just in case. <laughs> and um, these are very fun. And I almost pulled these out of my bag last night to work on them with another project which I mentioned when I recorded yesterday and then because I was having such trouble with my download I thought I'm just gonna leave it for now and I'll get I'll pull it out when I uh, actually get a recording that worked uh, th let's see the next thing was a little pocket mirror and it's a little pocket mirror that I got in, in the li this little sachet bag and I can uh, check myself out while I'm showing you. <laughs> and I've got it upside down. But there you go. And it's a mirror. Can you see yourself? And uh, let's see, what else? Um, a set of knitting needles. These are um, straight bamboo needles. And they are a US 5. Which is perfect because most, almost everything that I've been doing lately has been on a 6 or lower. For some reason, well, I can't say that. Some knitting for hires are a little higher, but it seems like I like lighter weight yarns and I use the smaller needles. The next thing is a um, the Notions bag from Knitting's My Bag. Again, cute little Notions bag. And if you haven't been to Lois's shop, I'm going to see if I can make that work. If you haven't been to Lois's shop on Etsy, you definitely need to check it out. She's got some of the best bags, let me tell you. I've got a couple of them and I keep going back and checking them out, you know, because I think I'll get some more at some point. So, a nice bag. I love these little bags. I have, I think, three of them in my big knitting bag already. Um, so, great little 
little notions bag. And then I have a little book um, with a sheep on it. And again, I keep a notebook in my knitting bag just to jot down um, notes. Like if I'm at a knitting group and I need to jot down a yarn that somebody's using or if I get inspired from a, for a design, I will jot down notes. So this is perfect. I will definitely be putting that in my knitting bag. And then I have... Um, some lotion and a little pocket calendar along with a keychain that says got yarn keychain and this is the little pocket calendar from crystals creations and gifts and then I have a little goodie bag with some um, candy uh, some post-it notes a gift certificate, or not a gift certificate, a um, coupon for 15% off ethereal fibers. And I also received a sample from Wolf Farms and, and a 20% off um, coupon. And this sample that I received was cherry almond. And it smells very good. And Wolf Farms, they also have a, a video podcast, Dawn and Nicole. I finally had a chance to get caught up on their podcast this week. And let me tell you, they are absolutely hilarious. If you are not watching their podcast, you need to go over there right now. I mean, literally, stop watching this for a minute and go watch theirs because they are hilarious. I, uh, I, I really enjoy their show. And they have um, a line of herbal soaps and... I think soaps and candles and I'm not exactly sure all that they have. I've been over to their site and I know this month their um, their scent of the month is pumpkin spice and I'm and I think they, they give a discount on all all um, things with that scent during the month. So I'm I've been thinking about going over there and ordering some because pumpkin spice is my very favorite. So that is my goodie bag from the podcaster challenge. I am so excited about that. It was so much fun. I had fun just doing it for just to just to do the 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 challenge even without the prizes. I mean it was just a lot of fun to be able to work on things. Now, I still think it would be fun to to have the the podcasters doing the same thing. I know that a lot of people said, "Oh, okay, that one stopped, so we'll have to um get that one going again." Um, I know that a lot of um the people said that um they didn't want to see everybody doing the same thing, but I can see how you wouldn't want 26 podcasters doing the same thing, but it would. I think it would be fun to see two or three or maybe even up to four people doing the same project. So, Lois, if you're watching, maybe next year we could do two or three people doing the same project so we can see everybody doing something a little bit different. And then if there's, I know you don't want to do 26 people again, but um, then maybe it won't be so so cumbersome to do um, for so many different projects. So, but that is my podcaster challenge, and I'm so excited about getting that. And yeah, so we're gonna move on to try and get this back in the bag going to move on to whips now. Okay, now we have <laughs> figured something out about the cameras. My husband's camera only records for 12 minutes at a time. So we're going to try and keep some 12 minute segments just so I can try and use some of the footage from that camera as well. So I'm going to talk about, I'm going to jump around a little bit here today. Um, 
let's um, I guess I'm not gonna jump around I'm just gonna go right into the whips I have um, worked on on point this week and on point is my knitting for hire and it's kind of like a I, I like to call it the ballet sweater because it reminds me of something that a ballerina would wear so here it is last week I was right here on the first sleeve and as you can see I have finished the first sleeve it is not um, the ends are not woven in or anything but it is done and I have cast on for the second sleeve and I'm at about the same point that I was last week on the first sleeve so my intention is this week to finish this project because I know I said I wasn't going to be doing any knit, a lot of knitting for hire till the end of the year but uh, my friend who's a designer she had four things um, accepted all at the same time and they're all due by December 1st so I'm gonna help her out I'm gonna try and do two projects for her between now and December 1st and that's gonna be quite a bit of my knitting time so I have to hurry up and get this one done so I can get started on those and I also want to get some good progress on my my other projects too so this one's coming along I'm hoping that it will be done this week I think it will be it seems like it's a it goes pretty quick working on those that those sleeves as I'm doing the decreases so I can't see that being a problem as to getting that done this week and I'm tossing sorry for the leaning I'm tossing things around because um, oops I forgot one of my projects over there because the cats are sitting over here in the on this stool that's next to me I did work on the sock yarn blanket it is over there I didn't bring it over here at first when I thought I was gonna re-record I'm thinking you know what I'm not gonna show all the projects because I just want to get through this recording but then I thought you know what I'm gonna show them all and then I left the sock yarn blanket over there Anyway, I did do one square on the sock yarn blanket. Um, oh, forgot to tell you. I did, on the on point, I did 150 yards. And that's going to drive me crazy. Oops. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, um, my screen went blank. <laughs> or on my computer and I went to touch it and I turned off the the recorder <laughs> so I gotta remember to move my mouse anyway on point I was saying on point I I knit a hundred and fifty yards on that project this week so that did kind of eat into a little bit of my knitting time um, I'll go over my all my yards when I get there but the sock yarn blanket is over there I did one square I'm counting eight yards on the sock yarn blanket for this week not a whole lot the modified lady Eleanor which is in this bag I did do um, almost twice as much as I did last week I did almost two full rows and I am just two squares short of two rows I, I ended off here I did this row all the way across and I'm coming back this way now for the second row and I had intentions of pulling this out and doing um, the last two squares and I just totally forgot and then when I was pulling it when I was getting it ready to record I remembered and I didn't take the time to do it so I'm I'm just glad that I'm making progress on this this has been on my needles forever and I mean it's been on the needles since the very first start of the podcast it's been on the needles for um, see I could see myself so now I want to adjust everything <laughs> Aaron I totally get it I totally get it now I thought it was so cute when you were doing it but now I totally get it um yeah, so this project, I, I really just want to get it done. I am just getting ready to start the, um, the, la the, the third ball, 
I have this much left of the second ball and I did wind up the third ball yesterday after I recorded so this is all ready to go um, I do have one more I think I have one more ball after this so it's gonna be yeah I'm pretty sure it's one more ball after that so I still have quite a bit to go on it um, I don't have any specific goals on when I'm gonna get this done obviously if I can get one to two rows done a week I will be extremely happy about that Okay, so that was the Modified Lady Eleanor. Then I have the basic socks. Oh, and the Modified Lady... I'm going to try and remember to give you my yardage. The Modified Lady Eleanor, I knit 46.2 yards on that this week. Okay. And I've got these all tangled up. So the... Um, the basic socks. I did work on both of them a little bit. You can see my two, uh, <laughs> two different cameras. <laughs> um, you can see my, my stitch markers on each of them. I don't know. I think I did maybe five, ten rows on each. I am at the point of the um, short row heel now, and hopefully I will get that short row heel done. I haven't decided if I'm going to do a pattern on the leg. I usually don't decide until I get actually get to the um, heel or the, the leg. But I probably will keep these in stock on that for one main reason only, and that is the fact that I'm going to Knitting in the Mitten um, in two weeks. And we are driving out there. It's going to be about a two and a half to three hour drive. I'm not really sure. And... I'm not driving, so I will have car knitting time. So I'm thinking I might leave them stuck in it just because I think it would be an easy project to work on in the car. And on that project, I did 18.63 yards this week. More basic socks. I had a chance, oops, that's not more basic socks. I had a chance to work on this project um, during a virtual knit. And, um, here you go, and you might be able to see that there are two stitch markers, two stitch markers on there, because I did work on this project a little bit yesterday, a tiny, tiny bit yesterday, after I recorded the first time. So the green is where I was earlier this week. I was on a virtual knit with um, a couple of people that I had chatted with before, um, Tammy and uh, Cheryl, and um, I met Melody and Vivian on that chat and I think Mary was on there and Susan I think that was all that was on there it was it was a chat during week dur during the week during the day um, I had kicked the guys out of the office and I said I'm going to get on there I saw I think it was Vivian posted that she was doing the the chat on Google Plus and I thought I'm gonna jump in there if I can get those guys out of the office so I kicked him out, and I did. I jumped in, and that was fun. So I worked on this project just so it was something easy to work on while I chatted with them for a bit. On that project, I did um, 32.45 yards this week. On the Sofa Saver, I did do some on this one. Let's see. Here we go. Just trucking right along, I did, I don't know, 10 rows or so. Um, the Sofa Saver, I did 57.9 yards on this project. And I am still using my, um, my, my bubble afghan pattern versus the um, pattern that was for this, um, the Sofa Saver in the little book. Um, so if you want to you want to make one of these you can use my bubble afghan pattern um, It's very similar. It's not totally the same. I mean, I I think when I showed this before you could see um, where the transition was and um, I can't really see it now, but I'm when I showed it before you could see where the transition was It's not exactly the same, but it's close enough for me that I prefer the bubble afghan technique than um, than this one so you just have to cast on less stitches so 
that is the sofa saver. And again, I did 57.9 yards on that project this week. <laughs> My husband's giving me the one, two, three to go. <laughs> okay, so that was the sofa saver. Um, now I have the bear. And I didn't work on the bear this week. Yeah, I said I was going to get it done, and I didn't. It's still here. It's still cute. I I think I'm going to try and get this done this week because I really don't want to get the um, the few bears that I have in the mail so they're off and gone. Uh, this bear is sponsored by um, Laura Lolly T. And um, I still have... That means that I'll be down to nine bears that I have to make that are already sponsored. So I am still going to make them. Don't worry. They're going to get made. Um, so yeah, so this is the second one that's being sponsored by, um, Laura. And hopefully this bear will be done this week. So no progress on that. Oh, uh, let's see. So put that over here. Okay, so that was the sofa saver and the bear. And then I have my simple double crochet afghan or blanket. And remember last week I talked about this yarn and um, how the knots were in there. Well, I'm finding less knots. I think that the first um, ball that I used, it just happened to be a fluky thing. The first 10 yards had ten had five, at least five knots in it. Uh, but I haven't found as many knots in the rest of this. I've done two, three more stripes. I did. I had the green, the first green stripe done last week, and then I did three more stripes. And um, I think I found maybe one or two knots in there. But I just crocheted right past them. I didn't worry about it um, because, like I said before, this is going to be just a a lap blanket for the cats. But, oh my God, this yarn is so soft. This is um, Joanne's Sensations Fever. I'm pretty sure that this is discontinued, and I think the reason why it was discontinued is because of all the knots, maybe. But they have little beads in it. Um, and I don't, You're definitely not going to be able to see. I'm not even going to try and show you. They're just teeny tiny little beads, but they're in with all this fluff that it's hard to see, but you can feel them when you touch the fabric. But I do really like this. I did wind up yesterday after I recorded the two the two next balls, and I did find a huge knot in this pink ball, which is why I um, I wound it as two separate balls because literally it was a huge wad of of um, knot. So I wound them separately. So I will be weaving in those extra ends. But this project I think is going to be my saving grace for um this challenge the knit your stash challenge because i knit in the three stripes that i did i think i i think it takes me maybe about an hour to knit a stripe or i'm sorry crochet a stripe and i crocheted 229 yards 229.65 yards this week on this so three skeins and um yeah so that's gonna go quick and I have 10 skeins of the green and 8 skeins of the purple. Although one of the skeins of the green um, is doesn't have the beads in it. So I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. It depends. We'll see how it goes. So that's that. I don't know if I'm going to put any kind of crocheted edge around the outside. Maybe I'll use that, that extra green um, along the outside. I don't know. I mean, it looks pretty pretty good around the outside. I don't think it's going to need anything, but I'll wait until I'm done to see what I decide to do about, about that. But this yarn is extremely soft and cuddly, and I'm glad to be getting it out of my stash. I I know I wouldn't have worn it if I made a sweater out of it or whatever, so this is like the perfect project for this. And again, I did um, 229.65 yards on that project. Oops, sorry, Crystal, this week. Okay, that leads me to um, Bacardi. And I did um, work on, oops, oops. I did work on Bacardi this week and I started my sleeves and I am knitting them in the round and I'm sticking them. 
Here's my one of my steaks. Show this camera. Show this camera. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Um so yeah, this is coming right along. I on this project I did 70 um 70.7 70 yards and um So it's come it's coming along. I'm loving this pattern. I can't wait until look at me. I'm just I just want to knit this. I want to I want to knit it. I want to knit it. Um I can't wait till this is done. I'm very excited about getting it done um because I really like the colors and I just want to wear it. It's getting to be cold sweater weather and I just want to wear my sweater. So with the knitting for hires that are coming up, I'm not sure how much progress I'm going to make on it. I am going to try and make progress on all my projects every week. What are you doing, Crystal? She's using the furniture as a jungle gym over here. <clears throat> so that one I, I did 70.7 .7 yards on that project. And then that takes me to um, the Citron. <clears throat> and the Citron I started, I was going to say last night, but no, it wasn't last night. It was the night before on Friday because um, I recorded yesterday and I had this started yesterday. But here you go, and you can see where my marker is. That's where I knit on it yesterday after I recorded for the first time. <laughs> but I am doing this um, this knit along with Dramatic Knits with Steve and Callie. Hi guys. Um, they started the Citron knit along, I think it was last week. And I've been wanting to start it, it was like, I think it was last Friday, Thursday or Friday that was the start date. And I've been wanting to start it since then. That was the 14th or the 15th, I think. Um, and I just never got around to it. But I have started it now, and it seems like a pretty simple project. And I'm going to enjoy doing it. I am using um, Malabrigo Baby Merino Lace. And I can't remember. I think it's geranium colorway. It's bright, bright pink. What else would I be using? <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, so far it's going good. This yarn is so soft. It is a single, and I'm not too fond of singles. But, um, it's a shawl, and I think it won't get, you won't get, um, won't pill or anything like that, because it's going to just be wrapped around my shoulders. So... I am very much enjoying this project, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the different projects that are posted um, on Dramatic Knits. I think uh, Callie had said when they recorded on Friday, I watched their podcast yesterday um, while I was hoping mine would upload, and um, I think she was saying that they already have some people that were posting progress, so I'm going to go check those out and see. So if you want to join in with the Knit Along with Dramatic Knits, and uh, go over there and check out their, their thread. So so that's the Citron. On that project, I knit uh, 14 yards on that project. Not too much, just getting it started. Okay, so that takes us to what's coming up. I have, like I said, a lot of things coming up. Sorry, I forgot to start my timer. I have to use this timer, um, and here I am adjusting. <laughs> Um, because my cam my husband's camera only records for 12 minutes and then it cuts it, so I have to monitor to make sure that my clips are 12 minutes or less. Um, which is fine. I think it'll save time with the, it'll be longer to import it into iMovie, but if I have to record one clip or something, that'll be a lot easier than trying to record the whole thing. And I think that uh, Steve at Dramatic Knits started doing sections on his podcast when he started having trouble. So anyway, back to what's coming up. Like I said, I have um, some knitting for hire that's going to be starting. I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to be able to show any of that. Um, I might be able to show you the yarn. That's probably about it. But I will try and make progress on all of my projects or at least some of some progress on some of them. Um, while I'm trying to get that knitting for hire done. Like I mentioned, I am going to Knitting in the Mitten um, in two weeks. And um, hopefully I'll get a lot of knitting time there. 
I mean, when you don't have to cook and clean and do everything else, I think I'll be able to get a lot of um, knitting done. It's like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, and then the ride, the drive time too. So hopefully that'll go well um, with getting progress done. But the things that are coming up, I am starting a colorwork mitten knit along. I mentioned it last week, and the the colorwork mitten you have to use a pattern from Valerie Woodworth. She's um, a friend of mine who has designed some awesome, awesome um, colorwork mittens. This is the mitten that I'm going to start with. This is Stinky Pink, and let me see if I can get it in here to show you. I'm showing on both cameras at the same time, so hopefully that'll work. And I'll show this camera, but. Mr. Flip, I don't know if I'm going to be using you too much, <laughs> so we're going to see. Mr. Flip might have to uh, take a little time out. <laughs> but this is the pattern that I'm going to start with, the Stinky Pink. And um, I think that these are going to be fairly quick um, fairly quick um, projects, the, the mittens. And so the Knit Along runs from November 1st to... Um, January 31st. So you have three full months to make mittens. You can make mittens um, every month. You can make a pair of mittens, you know, so you could get three three uh, mittens, pairs of mittens done in the, in the knit along. I'm going to start with Stinky Pink and then I'm going to go on to Red Velvet. Um, but this is the yarn that I'm going to use. And um, my this is my bag had caught on this, so... But this is the yarn that I'm going to use. This is Palette. Now, Valerie's patterns call for Volmise. But I want to show that you can use other yarns as well. Um, I'm going to, and I have a, I think I mentioned last week, I have a hard time um, breaking up my Volmise into pieces when I am, want to make something bigger. So I'm sure that I will make mittens with Volmise at some point. But I want to wait until I have made a larger project with those um, with those yarns. So this is what, and I'll mention more about Volmise in a minute because Erin from Mommy Needs Yarn and I are probably going to do a Volmise knit along. Anyway, this is what I'm going to use. It's um, it's Knit Picks palette, and I received this one as a gift from Valerie. And I had the black in my stash already, and I ordered the white, and I did order a bunch of other palette too because Valerie was telling me how it's just so fun to use the, the yarn as like a painter's palette and play with it, and I can see how that can be very addicting. So I did order like 21 balls of palette. Yes, I did it. So, and I forgot to mention all my stats on my um, Knit Your Stash challenge, so I'll do that in a minute. So anyway, so this is the yarn I'm going to use for this, and like I said, I am going to move on to Red Velvet after this one. I haven't decided um, what yarn, what colors I'm going to use, or if I'm going to use um, the palette. I probably will use the palette again because I have so much of it now, um, but we'll see. I am planning on doing a tutorial, a color work tutorial about carrying your floats. Now, on these patterns, on most of Valerie's patterns, I don't think you're going to need to carry your floats really because most people, the general rule is if you're knitting, if you're carrying your, your yarn more than seven stitches, I'm sorry, more than six stitches, so seven stitches, um, then you carry your float. You, you catch your float so that it doesn't just hang loose. However, I feel more comfortable with carrying my floats for four or less. So if I'm carrying it for five, then I will catch my float. So I am planning on doing a uh, short tutorial on that. And I'm hoping to do it both with Continental holding one um, yarn in one hand and one in the other, as well as English. Um, the first time I did some some... Uh, Fair Isle, I was knitting English style, and by the time I got a few rows done, my yarns were so tangled and twisted under one another because I didn't know how to catch my 
catch my yarn without twisting everything up. So I'm going to do a demonstration. So hopefully that'll help. Even if it doesn't help for this particular project, because most of the stitches are two or, um, I don't know. I think there's one here that one row that just by looking at the pattern that might be four or five stitches, but I don't think you're going to have a problem with this, but I'm going to do that tutorial anyway. Hopefully Mr. Flip, you over there will cooperate because I don't know how easy it'll be to record it on my husband's um, digital, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. But hopefully that will be up by next week um, so that you'll have that information for when the, when the, the uh, knit along starts. Um, there was one more thing I was going to say about that. Oh, if you want to enter the drawing for, to win a pattern, we are going to, I'm going to do it. We, <laughs> I am going to do a drawing next, the next week when we do, when I record the podcast. Um, so go and enter, enter to win a pattern. There's going to be two winners and, uh, all you have to do is tell, tell me why you want to join the cow, the knit along and, uh, you're entered. So go and check that out and enter to win. The next project, and I didn't bring over the um, the pattern, but I am planning on starting at some point in the pretty near future, hopefully. I am planning on starting the Multnomah. And I am going to use this, my, um, the yarn that I hand spun. And this was hand spun and I Navajo plied it. So I'm very excited about trying this out and I am going to do the Multnomah with it. So that will be coming up. I mentioned that um, Aaron at, from Mommy Needs Yarn and I are probably going to do some kind of Vulmai's um, knit along. She has been hoarding her Vulmai's and I have kind of been hoarding mine since I got it. And we both think that we just need to take the plunge and use it. So she's kind of posted on her thread um, to kind of get some feedback from viewers, which, which color to use, which pattern to use. I'm kind of just going along with whatever she chooses, um, unless I really don't want to do the pattern that she does. But um, when I checked the other day, some of the patterns that were, were suggested, I was really liking. So, um, yeah, I can't remember which one she was thinking about doing because I watched her show from Friday yesterday as well. Um, I can't remember the name. It was some odd name that starts with a P. That's all I remember because I don't know how to, I didn't know how to pronounce it. So it's hard to remember something when you can't, when you don't know how to pronounce it. So anyway, um, so that's going to be coming up. I don't know. She, I think she mentioned that we might start that next month. So look for another project on my needles. Not that I don't have enough already, right? Okay. So let me jump back and talk about, um, knit your stash. So far, we have 41 people, including myself, that are committed to doing this. And I think that is totally awesome. Um, I do want to remind everybody, if you could add um, the, the tag uh, to all your projects that you're working on, whether you finish them during this challenge or not. Um, but the, the tag line is KYS for Knit Your Stash, the number four. QTR for quarter 2011 because I think that I'm going to do this um, a few times, maybe every quarter, um, maybe not. I'm thinking next next month um, or next quarter I might do something with spinning. I don't know if I'm going to incorporate the two. I have to give it some thought because when I do my spinning, because I'm doing such a fine um, a fine weight. I um, sometimes don't finish it, you know, so it won't count towards the challenge. But I'll think it through and maybe we'll add spinning next time to this, this challenge. But let me give you my numbers for this week. I kind of went through all of the numbers with the projects, but these are my totals for the week. So this week I knit uh, 469.53 yards. That is what is counting towards my um, my challenge because technically I knit hundred another hundred and fifty and a half yards on the knitting for hire, which is not counting towards it. So 
if you add the two together, it's it's 600 around 600 yards that I knit this week, which is great, but I don't know if you can hear her, but Sammy is snoring. So anyway, so yeah, so about six, a little over 600 yards, 619 yards that I um, knit this week. I didn't have any charity knitting because I didn't work, have any progress on the bear this week. I did de-stash uh, 1,096.6 yards, but here's the kicker. I purchased 4,800 51 yards. That is all the Knit Pick palette that I had mentioned last week. That was 21 balls. So technically I'm kind of in the hole right now. So um, progress to date for the last two weeks I've knit 975.09 yards. That's what's counting. The knitting for hire was 182.5 the charity knitting was 106.5. This is the this is the combined um, totals. The D stash totals was 2,709 yards, 709.6 yards, and the influx of yarn from gifts and from purchases was 5,482 yards. So yeah. I'm still digging a deeper hole at this point, but I'm hoping that that is going to stop. So we'll see. So yeah, um, so that's knit your stash. I feel oh yeah, I, I I kept thinking I forgot I was forgetting something. It's not on my it's not on my notes, but I do want to talk about my spinning. Um, so yeah, knit your stash challenge. So if you haven't already joined the thread, go and join the thread. It's going to be so easy. All the information on um, what counts and what doesn't is on the uh, thread. And, uh, yeah, I think it will be very easy to do. You don't have to necessarily finish your project. but uh, And it's 6,000 yards in under three months. So I think, I think it's very doable. I mean, the fact that I am de-stashing so much. Um, and I really... For my own personal, um, my stomach is growling. <laughs> I hope I hope you don't hear that because maybe I can blame it on Sammy and snoring. But I didn't eat breakfast. It's early in the morning because I got up and I realized that after everything that I did yesterday with Apple, that my thing, my video still was not importing properly, and I just sat down and started recording because I was like, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Okay, so I guess that that um does not record 45 minutes. That camera has stopped. It says camera full. <laughs> so I guess I'll be recording on these two for the rest of the show, which is almost done, so that's okay. Okay, spinning. I put my bobbin back on my wheel because I did start the second part of the Four Rivers Yarn and Fiber. So this is actually the first bobbin that I showed you, I think a couple weeks ago. So there you go. And, now, and I can see, so I can show you a little closer. And I'll show Mr. Flip too, even though I probably aren't gonna use you. Um, so this is going quite well. I, I have, been working on this, trying to work on it um, a little bit every, at least a little bit every day. Um, I I did order fiber for the Knit Girl Spin Along Knit Along, and I think that's supposed to be coming the first week in November. I don't think I'm going to have this done by then, but we'll see what I can accomplish by then I'm, I might I might be taking my wheel to um, knit in the mitten so that might give me some extra time I did finish and I'll pull this one off I did finish the second bump of the yarn hollow BFL and Tussa silk 
I pulled it off the needle yesterday. I mean, off the off the um, spindle yesterday. Oh, that camera just shut off. And um, I wanted to show you what I came across, but it didn't happen because I couldn't show you that recording. But what I had done was I had I had kept most of my um, I had kept most of my yarn in the top in less than the top half, probably like the top third. And what I found was it got so thick on that part that when I was spinning, the um, the fiber was jumping off the hook, off the um, the little notch and coming up and wrapping around the hook. So I was dropping my spindle quite a bit and it was very frustrating. So what I ended up having to do is I ended up having to move the not not move what was already there down but add more um some length to my cop because it would just kept jumping off and it was so frustrating one day i i was spinning for you know 10 minutes and i think i dropped it more than i spun so that's what i did i just started winding on further down so I had a longer um, cop versus a little ball at the top. So if you're having trouble with with that, um, if you have a lot of yarn on your spindle and you're finding that the the fiber is jumping off and extending up, then try extending your your cop down further on your shaft and maybe that'll help. But alas, I wound it onto the the bobbin and these are bobbins that my husband per, uh, made for me um, that I can wind my fiber on from my spindles so I don't have to use the bobbins from my wheel now I will be plying this on the wheel but I'm just gonna be pulling them off of here so these are perfect for that and my husband just had some some wood and um, he just made them so He's a genius. I'll put that back over there. Maybe I won't. I can't reach it. Okay. <clears throat> so that's spinning. <clears throat> what else? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. Virtual knitting. Virtual knitting club. I mentioned that I jumped in on a virtual chat earlier this week and I think it was Friday Thursday or Friday my friend Kathy had stopped by and she had asked me when I was gonna do another virtual chat and I said you know what I really need to schedule one because the last couple chats that I've got in on I have just kind of jumped in on somebody else's and I haven't scheduled one myself so I am scheduling my next virtual chat which will be next Saturday and I think the date is the 29th and since I have my computer right here I'm gonna take a quick look um, yes the 29th October 29th it will be from uh, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Google Plus if you are not already in my Google Plus circle, please contact me and add me. Um, I've been having a lot of random people add me on Google Plus. So if you've added me and I haven't added you back, um, can you send me some kind of a message on Google Plus saying, this is my user and please add me, I'm a knitter. Um, yeah, because I'm not adding everybody because I, like I said, I've had some random people adding me, and I, I mean, they maybe they watch the podcast, but when I look at their feeds, they don't have anything to do with knitting. So I'm not really adding anybody other than knitters on Google Plus right now. So yeah, if if I haven't added you back and you're not in my circle, then please send me some kind of a message either on. Google Plus or on Ravelry or wherever just to get me a message so that um, I know to add you to my circle. 
So that'll be next Saturday from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I know that's going to be hard for those West Coasters who, um, you know, that because that's going to be, what, 3 to 7? And that's a, a strange time on a Saturday afternoon. Um, but I can't, I don't know if I can do it much later than 10 o'clock because by 10 o'clock, my body, even if I've had a cup of coffee to kind of rev me up a little bit, my body is just, is by 10 o'clock, 10 or 11 o'clock, my body is like, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, I might be able to, to, to take it a little longer if I can get a, a nap in earlier in the day, but it depends on how recording goes and all of that. So next Saturday, October 29th, and when I record next week, I will do the drawing for the, um, the patterns, the color work mitten patterns, and I think that's it. I think that's it. I'm hoping that with all these different clips that I've done just now, I can put a show together for you. So that's all for now. I hope you have a great week, and I hope your knitting blooms this week. Bye!